Welcome back to another tutorial at Take Refuge 3D, where today I will tackle the uh, Blender Donut, but instead of in Blender, because that's already been done, I'll do it in Plasticity. Now, um, I want to make this a bit of a tutorial for uh, beginners to Plasticity, but not too 3D, not too 3D. So, I'll do a brief overview of the. Uh, interface and then we'll we'll get into it um, so first of all a, a little story um, you can skip ahead if you want I'll put a uh, timestamps down so you can do that feel free to go ahead but um, my little story is that um, I actually met Andrew Price the guy who makes the uh, blender guru, guru channel and also the the blender guru donut um, a couple of years ago um, when I was quite green into 3d um, I had been playing around for Blender for around about a year and I started to follow Andrew Price's uh, socials and then about a day after I did that um, I noticed that he was coming to my city to talk and he said on his Facebook page hey I'm coming to Melbourne and I'm going to be talking at the Abbotsford Conference, Abbotsford Conference um, about you know the blender guru channel for this 3d conference and I've got a spare ticket if anyone wants it and I just said yep me please and I think I was the first one to respond so I got the ticket and I think it was a two-day conference and it was really great fun I got to meet Andrew Price and um, lots of other people from the 3d and games industry um, including a concept artist that you may have heard of called Furio Tedeschi um, and I hang out, I hung out with him for a little bit and I hung out with Andrew Price for a little bit and it was great fun and probably kept me interested in 3D for enough time for me to get good enough to want to continue doing it. So thank you very much Andrew Price for that. And one big takeaway for me from that was that the 3D industry in general or, 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 or 3D art is very much about merit. Um, Furio Tedeschi and Andrew Price are both uh, self-trained guys that um, made a career out of it. So it's it's possible for self-trained guys like me and, and, and a lot of you uh, to make a career out of it. At the moment, a uh, junior level 3D job doesn't pay quite enough for me to give up my day job, but um, I still love doing it um, and do it every single day. So um, let's get into the uh, tutorial. So first of all, this is plasticity. Okay, and as you can see, the interface is not very confusing. It's very simple. It's sleek. It's bare bones. It doesn't overwhelm you with information, which is great for people who just want to make art. Um, a lot of 3D softwares, <laughs> Maya and Blender, um just have everything on screen all at once i will forgive zbrush on this fact because zbrush is designed for you to use it with a pen uh, and it makes a lot of sense in that regard um and you can completely customize the zbrush uh, interface which is great so let's start with the interface here so we'll start up um with the outliner it's a scene outliner if you've used other 3d softwares you've seen something like this um, it doesn't have much of a, a hierarchy but you can group things um, by you know selecting some objects and pressing ctrl g you get a little group and you can rename it um, but it, it, it you know it doesn't have like a a, a massive hierarchy uh, system or anything like that um, there's three kinds of objects there's curves sheets and solids a solid is a solid object a sheet is uh, essentially a plane um, you know an infinitely thin object and then a curve is a uh, a NURBS curve um, so a curve is just uh, anything that doesn't have any uh, depth yet and then you can turn a curve from a curve into a solid or a sheet um, depending on whether you're extruding it or lofting it um, so that's the outliner up here just like blender we've got the uh point mode edge mode face mode and object mode and you can press tab to select them all at once 
um, and you can press one, two, three, four on your keyboard numbers above your keyboard, not the numpad, uh, to change between those. To the right here, we've got toggle, uh, we've got perspective or orthographic. So I've got my donut in orthographic mode, and then we can go into perspective mode as well. Um, then we've got toggle overlays, turning the grid and the axes on and off in the viewport. And then we've got toggle x-ray mode, um, which we can't see right now because we're in material mode. Uh, and we need to turn our edges on, actually. That's probably more what, more to the point. So, yeah, so we've got our x-ray mode so we can see what's going on behind anything that's occluding the view of the back. So I can see the sprinkles in the background there. Um, and we can turn our edges off again and turn x-ray mode off. Um, and then we've got material mode. So at the moment, I've got render mode on. Uh, which I believe is just uh, basic PBR material with a basic uh, HDRI in the background, and HDRI being a uh, a 3D environment photo. And then if we toggle this off, we go into uh, our mode, and we'll turn edges on for this. So we go down here and show edges. You right click to pull up this material mode. And we have a few different matte caps. Matte cap is a, a basic material used in 3D software. It's a material capture. Um, and we've got a few different matte caps. This is the basic one. Um, and then we've got a, a metallic one for showing off uh, surface imperfections. And then we've got a um, couple of these line ones um, to show off uh, where there's warps or stretching and then we've got uh, a sort of a basic material it's it's like a more basic version of the the main um, material render and then we've got a matte one which I quite like the look of to be honest and then we've got um, this one which is for viewing a silhouette of an object to make sure that you've got your form looking good so I, I can tell I can almost tell from this angle that I might be looking at a donut or even from that angle. So that's good. My form's all good. And then I've got this one, which is just the basic color, uh, which just shows the color. So we get this kind of a uh, flat 2D, two-dimensional donut cartoon style. Um, and that one's kind of good for seeing also uh, how details um a comparing and, and scale and things like that. Um, so we'll go back into our um, we'll go back into our um, basic modeling mat cap and we'll start a new scene. So with our new scene open, we've got our cube here and we'll turn our overlays back on. And um, what we see to the right here is a list of um, or, or, or a toolbar with different um, things we can do. So we've got, uh, we can make rectangles, spirals, polygons, circles, uh, curvy curves, spline curves, and also control point curves and lines. And we can also add points to curves. We can trim curves and we can add some basic primitives of a sphere, uh, a box and a cylinder. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to press number four on our keyboard numbers above our keyboard, and we're going to uh, select, uh, or you can select up here, number four, uh, object mode. We're going to select our cube, and in true Blender fashion, we're going to delete it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a torus. Oh, we don't have a torus. Hang on, we'll do the search menu. You press F on the keyboard and there's no torus. Okay, I guess we're going to have to make a torus. They don't have a torus primitive in plasticity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into top mode by pressing 7 on my numpad to the right of my keyboard. And I'm going to select center circle. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to select center circle. And I'm going to make this about 2... Uh, two squares wide okay and then what we do we pull it out until it's two squares wide and then we right click 
to confirm our selection. Okay, then I'm going to press number one into front mode. And I'm going to choose another center circle and I'm going to go to the edge of this to where it says intersection. And I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to make this about, well, this is two squares wide. The other one was four squares wide. I do apologize. So we're going to make this two squares wide to a four square wide um, circle. Now, once we've confirmed that by right clicking, and making sure that we've got this highlighted yellow edge to show that this one is selected. We're going to go down the bottom here and we're going to press uh, choose the option for sweeping. And then we're going to choose our bigger curve by just hovering over it till it's highlighted. And select that and then we get this torus shape. I'm going to right click to confirm that. And... What we'll do is we'll actually go up here, we'll select both of these by holding down shift and selecting the next one, and we'll press delete, we'll delete our curves. Now you can see that this is sheet 8, so this is currently not a solid object. So still in object mode, we're going to select our object, and we're going to go down here, and we're going to go to the one that says it's a, it's a cube, that says patch holes along edges or create a patch from curves. Okay, so we're going to select that one, and we can now see it's a solid. Now, if we press number two, or select edge mode up here, we should be able to select this ring and now delete it. Okay, so now we've got our torus. Um, what I'm going to do again um, is go into top mode, and I'm going to select regular polygon, bring it over to the origin, and I'm going to roll up, and this is a polygon with five... This is a polygon with five sides, um, and we want more sides. So you want to hold down shift, and you want to scroll your scroll wheel until you've got lots of sides, okay? And then when you've got the uh, about this many sides, I don't know how many it is exactly, um, you want to right-click to confirm. And we actually want to bring this in a little bit. Okay, so now we've got all of our sides. We want to press 1 on our keyboard or go up to the top left and select uh, point mode and actually we want to select edge mode first okay you can see we've got one curve which goes all the way around connected uh, uh, you know polygonal curve and then so we want to press alt and j to unjoin all of these individual lines from the curve so then we end up with all of these curves press one to go into top mode okay and then in edge mode, we want to select the top half of this uh, shape uh, and press X to delete it. And then we want to bring our way uh, and select all of these other ones, these other curves, or you can just select like that if you're in edge mode. And we want to press J to join them back together. We want to go one to the front mode, or actually we want to press one to go into point mode. So one on our keyboard, and then we want to select every other point, and you can do that by holding down shift, and then you'll see that the, the points that you want are uh, highlighted white. Press 1 to go into front mode, press G to grab, and just pull this down like so. You can see where we're going with this, and what we'll do next, I want this to be kind of... Yeah, I think that's okay. So th now we're going to select all of these ones in the middle. Okay, it doesn't matter about the ones that are outside of the um, actual. And we want to bevel this. Okay. And then we'll press, so you press B to bevel. So apologies. We'll go back. We select these ones here. And we press B to bevel. Okay, and we just drag it until we get some droopy kind of uh, donut icing shape. Obviously, the, the further you drag it, the firmer the icing. But I'll do that like that. Right-click to select. Number two on the keyboard to go back into um, edge mode. And then we want to press C for cut. And then we select the object that we want to cut. Now, this might not have gone right, depending on your curve. Because, uh, as you can see there, it's got um, quite a long... A uh, bit around the side there and the same on that side. So what we might do is go back a couple of steps 
Uh, press 1 to go into front mode. Select our curve. And we could scale it in a bit and see if we get any different outcome. Okay, we don't want, we do want it to end um, after the object is, oh, we're on a one into point mode and let's bevel all the relevant C cut and I think this will do. Okay, you can play around with it a lot um, if you want, but I think this will do. You want to go three into face mode and select the bottom face here. And we just want to pull this one in a bit. Okay. Um, and then you'll see that we've got our icing um, around the outside and on the inside. So you can right click to select. And then we want to go four into object mode. And we want to press Q. Okay. And then select our bottom half okay which is now showing red so we want to press q again to make that a union uh boolean and then we right click to select so now this has gone back to being one solid object now we want to select this curve here on the inside of the out well on the inside of the donut but the outside of the icing and one of these ones on the outside here and we just really want to Pull this down to be a fillet. So we've got a chamfer, which is hard. Okay. Uh, which we don't want. We want to fillet this one and the one on the inside. And then when we've just got enough that we want, we want to right click to select it. Okay. And then we want to do the same with the inner part. Okay. So... It might not always work out, but there, yeah, that one works. And now that we've got that one selected, okay. So sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly, fiddly with fillets, but now that we've got a fillet there, uh, that's a little bit big, but we can actually select the fillet that we already made to try and match it, and that's what it does. So now we've got our donut shape, um, except we haven't. Uh, if we go into material mode, it's all one uh, silver material. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into object mode, select the whole object and press Alt-J. Uh, and that will pull apart our whole donut into all of its component sheets. Okay, so we want to go into object mode, select this one. And we just want to go... Thicken a sheet and we want to thicken it in ways and then just right click to accept. So if we go into um, isolated mode, you'll see that it's thickened up like that. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to see it inside. We're just doing this so we can do our materials uh, within plasticity. And then we'll hide that quickly and then select everything else and just close J. And that'll join into one object and that's our icing so then we can unhide by alt h so it was h to hide sorry and then alt h to unhide um and then we've got this and then we can take it into maybe uh this uh material mode and start to apply some materials okay so we've got m for material we need to select i think uh, Oh, that's still a sheet. We need to thicken our sheet. So let's thicken this sheet. So we go thicken a sheet. Okay, so that might take a little bit of computing depending on your computer to thicken that sheet. Okay, so now we've got that. And we can start by... So you press M on the keyboard and you can choose a uh, material. Now we really want the metalness of this to be not metal at all. Okay, so we can go maybe 0 0.4. And we want to bring the roughness up a little bit. And we also want it not to be so crazily red. So we've got this kind of pink color. And then for the base, select the base. And we can choose a light brown color. And get rid of the metallic, bring that down. So you can just uh, drag these across and bring up the roughness and darken the color. Okay, I think that's two. 
Okay, and then we've got our donut. So that's and looks like a lovely donut. Um, if we take off edges and off our viewport display, we're starting to get somewhere with this. But we can take it further. Sprinkles. I know you are all waiting for the sprinkles. Okay, so we'll go back into our object mode. Okay, and what we're going to do, and we'll bring our overlays back on. We'll go into top view, and we will make two sprinkles. We will make one that is a line. Okay, and one that is a sphere. Okay, don't worry about the scale too much now. We just want to worry about the shape. So two into um, edge mode, and we want to come down here and press this button, pipe. And that is a very thin pipe, so we really want to fatten it up, but we don't want it to be that fat. So we're looking at our donut and how big out we want our sprinkles to be, roughly, because we can... Looking more for the proportions than the actual scale, because the scale, you'll see, we get rid of our curve, go into edge mode, and we can just we might just have to we've got this inner part to our pipe, so we just want to close that off. And now that we've got a closed off uh, pipe, we can do that. Okay, well we've got a sprinkle anyway. And let's scale down our, in object mode, let's scale down our circle. Okay. And let's scale down our sprinkle as well. Press SS to scale. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to start scattering some sprinkles. Okay. So you can duplicate an object by pressing Shift D and it will duplicate an object on the spot. And then you can move it around. Um, but that makes it a little bit hard to place all over the show. So... What we'll do next is we'll get rid of this one. We'll press Control D, and then it comes up with this little uh, guideline. And if we go underneath our um, our pill shape or our sprinkle, we can snap to edges, ends, and I want to snap to this one that says center, and then it will duplicate it. And as I bring it to the face, it will be um, on the face of this, but it's if it's going inside, you can press F on the keyboard to switch. Okay, um, where it is. And what I want to do is actually want to bring this so it's intersecting a little bit. And we can start rotating them. And when we press right click to confirm, it will give us another sprinkle. So we can start modifying these. We can scale them all slightly different sizes. Okay, and I might speed this up, but you'll get the picture. Okay, so there we have it. We've got the sprinkles covered. And then what I want to do is I want to put a few of these balls on there as well. So um, we'll do the same again. Control D. Select the, the bottom face as close as you can. You can press Control and 7 to go into pure bottom mode. And just select it there. And then once again, press the F key if you need to, to um, uh, switch the direction. So not inside the object, but outside the object. And I just want to bring this one down so it's intersecting about halfway. Okay, so now we can just go and put these balls. You can slightly edit the scale per one. Okay. Okay. So there we have the donut. We can get rid of our two um, original objects. Okay. And we've got now got all of these solids. So what I want to do is um, control G and group these two into a donut icing. Donut and icing, rather. Okay, so we've got those two objects in there. Okay, and we can just hide those by hovering over this and pressing the I in the viewport. I want to select all of these and duplicate them. Okay, and then the duplicated ones, which should be all selected down the bottom here, um, I want to move into a Control G. Okay, 
and I want to call this one sprinkles and I'm going to hide those as well okay and then these ones all here I'm going to bring back my donut and icing okay and I've got my my sprinkles one and then I've got all of these sprinkles so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the icing itself and I'm going to press Q I actually I'm going to press H on the bottom um, part of the donut and I'm going to press Q with only the icing and the sprinkles selected and I'm going to select the icing part of the object the icing object and then I'm going to press Q and I'm going to drag across here okay and all of these interception objects should show up as um, holes in the icing now and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click to confirm that and it might take a few moments to process okay and then Bob's your uncle you've got these um, indentations now I want to go to into edge mode and I'm going to try and select as many of these as I can okay so I might speed this up as well okay and once these are all selected So now that I've got all those selected, I'm going to try and, well, I don't have them all, a um, couple more here. I'm going to try and fill it, all of them, at once. It may not work. Uh, it chamfered them. So what we want to do is we're going to go in the other direction and fill it them. Okay, so we've got these fillets showing up. We can right click to confirm. And actually, I want to go back and I want to do that one more time. And I just want a bit less... Uh, I want to say 0 0.275, 0 0.275. Uh, just give it a moment. About 2.02. .02. And we'll just select that. We can add our sprinkles back in. And we can add our base back in. Okay, now let's go into material mode. Okay. And if, let's turn our edges off. And we've got all of these are silver balls. So what we really want to do, uh, let's just choose this uh, flat material for a moment. And let's so just select, go into uh, object mode and select a few of the sprinkles at random. I will speed this up. But what we're going to do is we're going to apply a different material to different uh, sprinkles so as you can see we've put a slight indentation where the sprinkles go um, which uh, will give it a overall um, more realistic uh, look so we want to choose different sprinkles colors okay so I've got some green ones and I'll just speed this up but we'll do another color And there you have it, a plasticity donut. Um, so this was not a particularly long or complicated tutorial. Um, however, I hope that, you know, if you're new to plasticity, uh, you learn a couple of the basic functions along the way and how the interface works and things like that. Like I said before, this is more of just a fun exercise rather than something that you would use plasticity for. I would say that Blender is still much better for making donuts than plasticity, but plasticity is absolutely fantastic when it comes to making um, hard surface objects, which I will be doing more tutorials on coming up and already have done so. So please like and subscribe to my channel um, if you haven't already. And... Um, click the bell notification uh, I seem to be uploading relatively regularly at the moment not just for plasticity but for blender also um, so that's a fun little tutorial thanks a lot for watching and tune in to take refuge TV take refuge 3d rather for more thanks a lot bye bye